Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. I get delighted in my heart when I hear people come to testify. It is consoling that while we hunger for more, at least we are happy seeing that the power of God is working. Pray in one minute, Lord, I am available. I am available in this season. Oh, let me be one of the factors that takes away reproach out of your name, away from your name. Many of our families still serve idols because we have not demonstrated power. Many of our families still serve idols because we have not demonstrated genuine priesthood. Take a minute to pray. Take a minute to pray. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, your name is to be known. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, please be seated. I believe a rain will fall in this place now. I believe that. Let me give you number three. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. The third thing we learn from Paul is that as abundant as this power is, please listen now, it says it is according to the power that works in us. These possibilities beyond what we ask, beyond what we think is limited by a rule. I want you to listen now. The rule is that it is affected by the power that works in us, not the power available to work. The power that works in us, not the power available to work. There is limitless power available to work. But what the nations will see is the power that works in us, not the power available in Christ. Are we learning now? This is very powerful. I wrote something here and I want you to please listen. According to the power that works in us means limited by the allowance that our consecration, our yieldedness, and our personal press gives the spirit. When the Bible says according to the power that works in us, it means God can be constrained. His power can be limited by the space that the saints give for that power to flow out limited limited by the allowance that our consecration limited by the allowance that our yieldedness limited by the allowance that our personal press gives the spirit to manifest that power wow now we come to the subject of the holy spirit and the believer here paul haven't justified the fact that God is all-powerful and he's willing to allow such tremendous dimensions of his power to show up in the world of men. He wants to get glory in the church and the way he gets glory in the church is to make tremendous power available which is dynamic in its working. But he's saying that in as much as that is a reality, 
the power that comes out through every believer is the dimension of power that the nations will see that means if they see a weak jesus that weak jesus came through the lens of a weak believer are we together now it is according to the power that worketh in us for many years i did not understand that scripture i just meant it's according to the power that flows from the holy spirit and that is correct but then i got to understand by the spirit that it is beyond that it means the allowance that is given to the holy spirit by every believer is the limit to which his power flows like a river now i have taught you here that the holy spirit listen carefully is both the custodian and the conveyor of god's power the holy spirit is both the custodian and the conveyor everything power is within his office the administration of spiritual power resides within the office of the holy spirit it is impossible to do and discuss the business of power isolating the person the office and the ministry of the holy spirit acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how god anointed the word the word was anointed had to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power he went about doing good and healing all that that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him Jesus as the word had to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost there is mentioned again Acts chapter 19 from verse 2 he met certain disciples and he said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, We've not even heard. That means if there is a power problem within the believers, there is something about the ministry of the Holy Spirit that believers need to learn. We have understood the word. And honestly, I tell you commendably, there is a very sound communication of God's word across the body. But I think that most people have not come to appreciate the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I am personally convinced that that is one of the, the missing links. We have not incorporated a thorough knowledge of the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We understand principles, nothing wrong with that. We understand mysteries, nothing wrong with that. But we have not engaged the person and the office of the Spirit to make tremendous power available through us. There is none of these people, the saints, especially in modern history, who have been used mightily by God. They were people of the word, but they will tell you that they were people who understood and had a rich fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I do not know anybody who works in authentic power at any level who has not cultivated a rich fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Are we together? The Holy Spirit is both the conveyor, the custodian, and even the administrator of God's power. Romans chapter 8 and verse 2, I believe. Please give it to us. There's a, there's a name. I like what the Holy Spirit is called here. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Life. Say that after me. The Spirit of He's not just called the helper, the advocate, the paraclete as we call it. He is called here the spirit of life. And that there is an operation that powers him in the life of the believer. It's called the law of the spirit of life. An operation that releases the full potential of the spirit of life. And it can bring freedom and liberty to men. Let me tell you this. I credit a lot of the happenings in my life and this ministry today to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I do not ignore the word of God. This ministry is called Koinonia. There is a reason why it is called. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship, the sharing together, the participation of the Holy Spirit to rest and to abide with you forever 
many believers have not come into rich fellowship with the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit let me repeat one last time is the custodian the conveyor and even the administrator of the power of God if there is scarceness of power flowing through you in diagnosing the problem you need to diagnose your relationship with the Holy Spirit and then diagnose your yieldedness let me say this very quickly when it has to do with the ministry of life and power the Holy Spirit is called a river Jesus began to speak and he made a very profound statement he said on the third day of the feast he said if anyone thirst let him come let him drink and he said that out of his belly listen carefully I know you sing it but now just listen because many people who sing that song don't honestly know what they are singing they just like the song and they believe it is true but he says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters I think that should be John 7 am I right verse 30 is it 39 look for it for me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water verse 39 now says this speak he this speak he of the spirit this speak he of the spirit which they that believe on should receive so that river he's talking about is speaking about the life giving ministry of the Holy Spirit flowing through the saints and he likens it to a river if you know anything about a river it is not static hallelujah one time they were doing a tour for us in the US and just the history of America and they showed you know a particular river that was flowing it looked like just a tiny river but it flowed right into the sea and then they were telling a lot of stories around it you know it was used to generate electricity at one point you know at the infancy of the whole history of, of America but I was I was intrigued by the fact that what you would call a small river they said sometimes when the rains are very heavy I mean it could just fill a particular space and I was just watching that river the Bible says out of your belly He's, it doesn't mean out of your stomach no there's nothing in your stomach for the Holy Spirit yes it's just your digestive system when he says belly it doesn't mean your stomach is a prophetic expression are we together that from your innermost being your spirit watch this now so where does it flow from he never said it flows from the throne when you read revelations you will see that there is a river that flows from the throne am I right on that and that river brings healings the Bible says that it flows to trees and the leaves are for the healing of the nations now Jesus is speaking and he says out of your belly that when you receive the spirit something happens and out of your belly will flow rivers of living waters the question is it flows to where flows to where in the similitude of the river that flows from the throne because now a throne has been established within you where Christ is Lord and there is a parallel of what happened that John saw in the throne that a river came out from the throne and it brought life it brought healing and because you have given allowance for that throne to be replicated within you there must also be a parallel expression that a river begins to flow and that that river flows through you it brings healing you want to know what the river does go to Ezekiel chapter 47 he measured a thousand cubits it was to my ankle he measured a thousand cubits it was to my knees he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my loins then he measured a thousand cubits and the Bible says it was an overflowing river please give it to us and as the river flow it begins to bring every death into life that's what it does it's a life-giving river let it flow right here right now afterwards he measured a thousand and it was a river i could not pass over for the waters were risen waters to swim in and a river that could not be passed over watch now verse 6 verse 6 please he said son of man 
he brought me and caused me to return and you know to the brink of the river verse 7 there's something i'm looking for and when he saw that he saw many trees on one side and on the other verse 8 and he said that this one they go down to the desert where does the river go to towards the east of the country and towards the desert and into the sea and he said it comes into the sea and the waters waters there talks of men the waters shall be healed that when that river flows it gets into waters and then brings healing verse 8 I, verse 9 i think it is i'm looking for where the fish it shall come to pass that everything that lives which move it whithersoever the river shall come it shall what look at this mystery it is already alive but that if it touches that river it gets life indeed and then it says and there shall be a great multitude of fish say harvest one more time say harvest because the waters shall come for they shall be healed and everything shall live whither the river cometh that's the implication of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That when the Holy Spirit is allowed to find expression in an individual. Now watch this. There are two ways the Holy Spirit makes a vessel a worthy conduit of power. Number one, it is called renewal. It's an inner working of the Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit comes, He does not just come to empower you. The goal is to empower you but it does not start with empowerment watch this now it starts with sanctification and renewal now there are two levels of sanctification theologically there is instant sanctification that happens to your spirit man at salvation but there is progressive sanctification that happens by your engaging the ministry of the word and the holy spirit are we together most people think when the holy spirit comes his next assignment is to produce power it is the reason why the holy spirit can barely find expression through them when the spirit of god comes upon any life and listen if you're a man of god in ministry listen it will help you to know how to raise and train people when you expose people to the ministry of the holy spirit the first thing to teach them about the holy spirit is not empowerment empowerment is a latter ministry of the holy spirit when the holy spirit comes the first thing is sanctification and renewal this is the first dimension of transformation sanctification and renewal is an inner work i think paul was talking about husbands and wives in ephesians chapter 5 and i think verse 26 he talks about the woman being the church that she is washed by the water the washing of the water by the word how does he sanctify and cleanse by the washing of the water and the word how does God sanctify and cleanse? He purifies your conscience. He purifies your mentality. There is the work of sanctification and renewal that happens to that believer. Then when you are sanctified and renewed, the next level of transformation is called enlightenment. You can be sanctified and renewed and not enlightened. So there are two phases to, trans to transformation. One is called renewal, sanctification that produces renewal. That one is not giving you a new information. It's destroying the old man and the whole software that causes that old man to be fruitful in your life. But then when that cleaning process is done, he needs to now begin to show you the ways of the spirit. It's called enlightenment. Paul prayed that prayer in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15 down to 19. That the eyes of your understanding... That is the inner work of the spirit notice he never started with power even though power was later introduced in the subject so that the eyes of your understanding that's how it starts being enlightened that you may know the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints now power can come verse 19 and the exceeding greatness of his power to us were to who believe according to the working of his mighty power let me tell you this i have learned this by experience and by the message of god 
I have seen people violate this formula and remain powerless in the spirit. I have seen people honor this formula and evolve into commendable levels of power. You never will be able to transmute the power of the Holy Spirit beyond the level of alignment and allowance that your person as a vessel gives him. That means if you give the Holy Spirit this little room, that is how small his power will flow through you. The possibilities that should be produced from your life as a result of abundance of power never happen. The reason is because there is so much the Holy Spirit wants to push through you as a vessel and as a channel. But your disalignment, bankruptcy of sanctification, renewal and enlightenment does not allow him does not allow his power to flow through you this is true the difference between my yesterday version and my today version is not necessarily my size it's not necessarily my voice it's not necessarily the platform it is the level of the yieldedness to have allowed the holy spirit to do an inner work are we together now let me tell you the truth this inner work takes a long time it's not something that is done in one week the inner work is likened to clearing a drainage clearing a drainage have you seen people try to clear a, a drainage that is blocking the flow of water drainage one of the days I was going to visit which department now I cannot remember and it was raining seriously and you know the, the roads you could barely see the road because there was water everywhere and I looked at the drainage and it was clear that the drainage was blocked. Something had blocked the drainage and the water was just spilling all over the road. That's what happens to people spiritually. All those debris, all those, those things, those, those things that fill your heart. Are we together? When the Holy Spirit comes, he begins to walk it gradually. Taking all those things out of you and when he clears that drainage, there can be a flow and once there is that flow life begins to come from you to people you will know that that drainage has been cleared because of the abundance of the miraculous that flows through your hands you will see an ease in spiritual operation you will begin to see that it does not take time again for you to pray for the sick there is that 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 debris had been taken away and the flow is there for many christians including pastors the channel for the Holy Spirit to flow his power and life to the nations has been blocked with all kinds of nonsense. Jealousy, competition, flesh, worldliness, carnality, everything like debris has been heaped upon it. So we come to people and we say in the name of Jesus and you can literally sense almost for want of word like a struggle from the Holy Spirit because you are the only vessel available there that he can use and we make the Holy Spirit look like a liar. The reason is because of disalignment in the vessels according to the power that works within you. The sick through your life will be healed, not just according to the abundance of grace, according to the power, according to the allowance that your yieldedness allows. When I found this, I began a project to pray. You know, I said, God, expand me, expand me. If it means to change the wineskin, change it, expand me. Because the kind of revival we want to see fall upon the nations will not it, they, you cannot put a very narrow channel it needs abundance of life giving water are we together someone who comes to you and says i have been plagued by a curse for 100 years is destroyed my grandfather great grandfather let me tell you theo, theoretically speaking it looks like all you need to say is satan get lost you try it and see if it will go it's more than what you see written here. The eyes of your understanding must be open to see that there are rules of engagement. There are men who will carry God and will literally be dripping the life and the power of God. You look at certain situations without speaking because of the abundance of that power. It's like torrents of power.
power flows from you to everybody around you. You are bringing miracles and healing. Every time people see you, you are welcome. You know why? You are welcome because you are a carrier of genuine power. Apostle, please, there is a situation here. What is it? My family is about to go into disarray. No, not when I'm there. I am an ambassador of the kingdom in the name of Jesus. And whilst you are speaking, you are speaking there is abundance of power. The Holy Ghost says thank you for being a yielded vessel because the amount of spiritual power required to bring the result that family desires, your yieldedness can allow it. Let me tell you this. Every manifestation of the spirit that seems difficult to find expression through your life is not necessarily difficult because God does not want it to manifest. It is that the Holy Spirit has to make do with the limitations of your yieldedness. Hear me. The Holy Spirit has been forced in many lives and many churches to make do with the level of yieldedness so we have not been able to see his power as a generation we pray for 100 people and maybe one two three four just one testimony one miracle there is like a multitude of people hungry and thirsty and imagine that they are standing before a tap and it is coming drop by drop do you know how you starve those people of life Imagine someone coming with his bucket to receive water from you and it is coming drop by drop. The problem is not the dam. The problem is you have not known how to open that spiritual valve. The Holy Spirit brought you to church tonight because some of you, your family members cannot wait again. They cannot wait again. If that power flows drop by drop, all of them will be dead before you become yielded. You need to expand that capacity. When you open a tab, sometimes in less than one minute, it fills the bucket. You carry yours and another person can come. You carry yours and another person can come. For many of us, we have piled people around the queue because we as those conduits and those vessels are not yielded enough. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we ask or think, but he's limited. So for the family begging for bread and not seeing the hand of God, for the person sick in the hospital, do you know, Kai, I've, I've visited a few people in the hospital, you know, through my time in ministry. I will never forget a dear woman. We got to the hospital that time and she was confessing the word, confessing the word, confessing the word. She will tell her children, play me scripture. She came from the word of faith. This woman kept confessing the scripture and never recovered till she died. When she died, that thing disturbed me. It was not the death. It was that honestly, maybe if I were not born a Christian, eh, there are many questions I would have asked. You, I can't, you, can't, you can't shrug that away and put it under the carpet. That a woman was confessing the word, genuinely confessing the word. Someone will pray on a handkerchief, she will place it on her head, confessing the word, I shall not die. Everything was going down till she really died. And I said, no, this thing is misrepresenting God too much. Now I know the answer. The answer is my sermon tonight, according to the power. The difference between Joshua Selman and T.L. Osborne is not Jesus Christ. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's that one has decided to not just be like a, a giant GP tank, but a tap opening in its full strength, whereas someone is still dropping droplets. My personal cry to God is that whatever it would take to open that tap, there is thirst in the land. There is thirst over families, economic thirst, spiritual thirst, there are things that believers have prayed for and it refused to go. There are conditions that seem not to answer. And you are saying, why? Let me tell you this. Every time you say, Lord, why is it that we trusted you but we did not see this manifestation? 
90% of the time, aside from a few other explanations which we'll consider in other subjects, but 90% of the time, what happens to men is not a reflection of what God wanted to happen. It was the bankruptcy of the flow of power. So the next time you say, God, use me, what you are saying is, God, expand me. Expand me. Expand me. So that when I stand before a sick person, there is enough channel of that power to flow. When I stand before somebody going through economic hardship, he can do whatever it takes to do humanly, but I can deposit something divine upon his head. Are we listening now? There are some of you seated here right now. Your loved ones are sick. You are having financial crisis. There are all kinds of oppression. Some of you, your sleep last night was a nightmare. I'm not glorifying Satan. I'm just trying to be honest with you. Some of you, whilst you are seated here right now, you are some of the most diligent believers with character, holiness and integrity I know of. But nothing has happened in your life from January till now. You will not bribe, you will not cheat, yet you have not seen one real manifestation of the mercy of God. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Our generation has to bring an answer as to why a woman will pray and fast on a sick bed and not recover till she dies. As to why somebody will say, I am a child of God. I will not take bribes and he will remain poor till his children cannot go to school. We need answers. The assignment of the church is to bring answers. If we keep fooling ourselves, shying away in irresponsibility and just creating all kinds of pictures and making it look like it is problems of members, sooner or later, they will leave us and go to seek whatever they feel can help them. Let me tell you the truth. The church was designed to be a place of answers. And I challenge every servant of the living God, including myself, that while we commend ourselves for the little God is doing, we must be honest with ourselves. The world is asking questions we are either not hearing or being deafened by our arrogance over little. And we are not staying to get real answers. We need answers. Tell me why the cancer plaguing me does not seem to reduce after prayer. And yet the Bible says, by his stripes I am healed. Tell me why integrity does not seem to reward in my life. Tell me why I raise my child in the fear of the Lord and he becomes something else. Where else should I go for answers? I've gone to the school. It attempted to give a few answers. I went to intelligent people. It attempted to give a few answers. I listened to my government. It attempted to give a few answers. You have told me that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain. Now I have come. Give me answers as to why my prayer over Satan does not seem to drive him. Give me answers as to why my confessing of the word does not seem to produce result. Can I tell you, the person who stands with God to say, Lord, use me to answer this question will be about the most valuable person in this generation. Use me to answer this question. Use me to answer this question. Use me to rewrite this narrative that you become an answer to a question that is in the hearts of men. Is it true that when we say, thus saith the Lord, it really comes to pass? All other factors being constant. You don't say yes, you prove it with your life. By gaining power with God like Jacob and then coming to multitudes and even nations and saying, thus saith the Lord. When you bring the results, you can teach us what you have done. And we can see truly that you have created a pathway for a generation to know God the more. I look forward to hearing genuine, verifiable cases of people who died before their time and were brought back to life genuinely not just by men of God but by members they trained that a lady will go home and say my mom died and I know it is not her time and I prayed and did engage this and my mom coughed back to life and said I was on my way going but I had your voice and you called me back 
I look forward to hearing terrorists coming to church to testify that we caught somebody and we saw angels. Angels appeared physically and said, if you don't lose these people now, you will see the limitations of guns and bows and spears. And we decided to lead the people out, not just to deliver them. Can I tell you this? Sincerely, if the church does not attend to the needs that are confronting society, the church will be extinct. Ah, but not in my lifetime. Not in my lifetime. I belong to that generation that will say, Maranatha, come. Everything, come. Your power, come. Your wisdom, come. Your glory, come. According to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church, in and through Joshua Selman. So whilst you are seated here, you are not just becoming a believer to get a job, get promotion. You are receiving what empowers you and planting a hunger within your spirit. Some of you after this program, you will go and have a retreat for two, three days and say, Lord, I'm not looking for power to satisfy my lust. The kind of alignment I need to submit to, to for God's sake, host more of you. Let it happen to me. I look forward to our worshipers raising one song and you will hear that everywhere that song was sung that the people received healings the people received breakthroughs are we together that a woman is about to give birth in the hospital and it's clear she will lose her life and she says there is a song that came from a worshiper it, it, the song trapped presence the song trapped covenant the song trapped something mighty something holy play that song for me and while the song comes supernaturally the woman gives birth because the song has become a language and an instruction to creation i look forward to times where people will carry the sick and right from the gate before service starts as soon as they cross it's like they cross from one dimension and enter another and while wheeling someone as soon as he passes that gate he says i don't know i feel like i want to stand up and he jumps up there and all we come to celebrate are empty wheelchairs here let me tell you this if you do not love jesus the message tonight will not make sense to you the message tonight is not for careless give me believers tea and bread believers the message tonight is for people who are hungry for more greater glory that you know that there is more God wants to do in your life by the time you carry the more of God he will send you anywhere anywhere and scatter anything that wants to stand your way are we together you shake someone's hand and say give me your hands as you shake that hand that is the end of a season into another because you carry God not in theory you carry God genuinely you carry God demons principalities you step into a place without bragging without making noise you bring your reality you have become a host that is enlarged enough for God to flow through a host and large enough for God to flow through listen to me the Holy Spirit desires to move upon the body of Christ again there is scarceness of power the fish dying in the sea souls running away from the things of God a whole generation is making mockery boldness over mocking God is increasing because the evidence that tames the pride of men is not there in our lives again so anybody can speak and say whatever it is all this church thing leave all this church thing use your common sense they are right until a generation rewrites that narrative one day I pray it does not happen that someone looks at your child and say young man the time you use for prayer the time you use for fasting the time you use for the study of the word, use it and do something useful in your life. Run away from this scam called the church. Ah, 
with my life I say God forbid God forbid God forbid God forbid that one day there will be an organized confrontation over the church a group of wealthy intelligent prosperous enlightened young men now throw a challenge to the church and say here is our evidence we hate God but all things have been put in place bring to me evidence why I should love Jesus Christ you have told me that he sorts the matters of my life in heaven and you say he also sorts my matters now bring it I have an assignment to make a contribution towards tearing a generation to find God genuinely genuinely to find that lost treasure the woman had ten by whatever carelessness one fell we have an assignment as a generation to find that treasure where is it where is it once upon a time men held it but right now it's fallen maybe slumber made it fall I've taught you how to find missing things get the candle light it you see that now the spirit of man is a candle of the Lord the Holy Spirit rests upon that candle and the light that comes from there then you get a broom the broom talks of your zeal your staying power your determination to remain till you find God and begin to sweep and the Bible says eventually someone maybe someone that someone is a generation who find it and you can call on others in righteousness and say by mercy I have found a treasure this is it I know the reason why cancers are not healed I have found it I know the reason why believers trust God for increase and still remain poor I have found it I know the reason why despite the prayers over demons they don't go I have found it and usually people will say you are a joker others say they found it too and you say no I found it for real let me prove it and you will demonstrate the reality of God's life here and now by the time you bring 100 cases of verified cancer patients 100 and every one of them with serious doctors proving it becomes impossible for anybody to doubt that something is here that is worth considering let me tell you the truth I've had the honor of meeting a few people who are not Christians and I've been amazed at their open-heartedness that if what we are bringing is substance enough they are open to listen open to listen that means the person can tell you I'm not a Christian I'm a scientist but if you can demonstrate to me the reality of the God life I am more than open to investigate it and if it will lead to my conversion so be it there is an opportunity like never before to bring the nations to the cross we are in a kairos moment as the body of Christ listen to me your assignment tonight is to cry that that inner work of the spirit empowerment is not the problem it is the inner work there is a lot of debris that needs to be taken out of our life seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses the bible says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and then to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the bible says who is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame as powerful as God is when he became a man in the person of Jesus he did not come empowered by default even though he was the word he showed us how a man can stretch his capacity in the spirit until he's able to host the spirit without measure and the Bible says as he is so are we that means we can host heavier dimensions of the spirit by grace and administer it in such a way that imprints the name of the Lord over our generation I'm praying for you 
I don't know who is willing to join me on this cry tonight. I don't know who is willing to join me on this journey to say I'm not satisfied. Lord, I, I thank you for what you have shown me. I thank you for what I have seen. But I tremble before you tonight in sackcloth and ashes asking you by grace and by mercy that you will do that work of purifying you will do that work of sanctification you will do that work of renewal you will do that work of enlightenment and do that work of empowerment within my vessel within my person that i will give the holy spirit greater flow let the power that works within me be in such a degree and proportion that can allow the river flow to the nations open your mouth wherever you want begin to pray open your mouth wherever you want begin to pray according to the power that works within us it is a press for more a press for more a press for more hunger for greater glory unto him be glory in the church unto him be glory in koinonia through koinonia unto him be glory in my life and through my life take a minute to pray you're not wasting your time restore the flow of authentic apostolic power restore the flow of authentic manifestations of the power of God the investments of the spirit let it not be scarce in our generation again deliver us from being noisemakers oh God and bring us to a place where we communicate the substance of the spirit life to our generation let the margin of error be covered let it be covered let it be covered let the margin of trial and error experimentation let it be eroded from our lives bring us to a place of accuracy and mastery bring us to a place of accuracy and mastery take a minute and pray ladies and gentlemen you are praying because you love God there is a dimension of prosperity that the church must capture it is important for kingdom come it is important for the betterment of believers there is a dimension of healing power that needs to be imported by aligned vessels there is a dimension of dominion a dimension of increase a dimension of invincibility over elemental forces this is our mandate in this season let a hungry believer pray let a passionate man of god pray take time to pray you're not wasting your time let's raise a cry as a global family raise a cry as a body of believers visit us oh god with your power genuine apostolic authentic power the power that is able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think enlarge our capacities in the spirit to host greater dimensions of your glory indeed let the river flow let it flow to bring healing to the nations let it flow to bring healing to the families let it flow to bring healing to careers destinies let men again call upon the name of the lord by the efficiency of our witness let many come to acknowledge the lordship of jesus pray do that inner work in me the work of purifying the work of cleansing the work of renewal the work of enlightenment expand my capacity in the spirit realign me realign me realign me realign me in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus 
in the name of Jesus I am encouraged and motivated to seek God the more because I have seen the benefits of seeking him the way I sought him yesterday yes by mercy it has brought me to this level so I know that if I refuse to be swallowed up by pride and holding on to shadows and I remain a student in the school of the spirit pressing with determination and desperation it means that which we have seen in the spirit will soon become our reality there are things I've seen in the spirit about my life and about this ministry that has not yet been made manifest my assignment is to partner with the spirit of grace since he has revealed it I know it is the will of God my assignment is to allow that river to flow my assignment is to allow that river to flow I have seen what God can do with a yielded vessel from scripture I have seen what God can do with a yielded vessel from history I have seen what God can do with a yielded vessel looking at our fathers they have shown us dimensions but even at that there is more and we are called in this season to expand we are called in this season to enlarge we are called in this season to not watch people who should be alive die people who should be healthy sick people who should be wealthy poor people who should be manifesting dominion kept down and bound in chains and yet we continue to cry out and make mockery of ourselves vocally advocating the liberty that is in Christ here is the generation that is determined to change that narrative I pray for you in the name that is above all names and by the power that raised Christ from the dead as the Spirit of God is recruiting men to this unique school of the Spirit that will emerge a certain species of believers believers who become worthy hosts of his presence and power I pray for you by mercy and by your determination may you be found to be one of those students may you be found to be one of those students may you be found to be one of those students may you be found to be one of those students in the name of Jesus Christ listen when God begins to invest his power upon men it will not all end in the pulpit God will use men to make statements upon the earth some of them will be an embodiment of his wealth mysteriously blessed by their lives they will they will they will make men to question economic principles beyond imagination not to mock them but to tell them there is more than economics dimensions that cannot be explained by men yet wrapped up with great godliness and humility I tell you such men will arise even from this house let me encourage the body of Christ in one minute be careful when you put a full stop to spiritual things don't use science to conclude on spiritual things for instance when it has to do with the subject of wealth wealth answers to value correct wealth answers to relationships correct wealth answers to knowledge correct wealth answers to productivity correct but if that is all you know about wealth go and sit down learn from the spirit there are virgin dimensions beyond the scope of what I just explained it would be foolish to imagine that is all about God's economy mm -mm. there is a lot more if all you know about ministry is excellent administration that is correct sound communication of doctrine that is correct but if that is all you know sit down there is still more to learn there is still something called a hear ye him anointing the mystery that compels men vetoes the incompetences of men and still brings them if all you know about raising children is to teach them the Bible that is correct if all you know is taking them to a good school that is correct if all you know is giving them your love as a parent that is correct but if that is all you know sit down there is still a lot more the challenge with the body of Christ is because of our stuntedness in growth we look to the dimensions that are currently available 
and we have put a full stop to mean this is the only way God operates is a big mistake. There is a generation that will introduce aspects of God that science cannot explain. Aspects of God that the financial world will not be able to explain. Many years ago, the Lord showed me a vision and told me something. He said there are seven dimensions of wealth and the body of Christ and even creation as we know today is only in the third dimension. So let's be careful when we conclude and say some things can never be done. If you want to prosper, the way is to get a job. You are right, depending on what dimension you see things from. There are accelerator systems that will be released in this end time. You will see people step into levels that defy economic explanations. Not to downplay on the lesser, but to show that in the economy of the spirit, there is always a greater. That you will never plateau with God. All you see is not all there is. There are ways to do ministry that are about to be introduced that will shock you, but the results will be undeniable. All we have seen is not all there is. Until the word of faith came, we never knew that there could be certain dimensions of God. Until the charismatic move came, we never knew there would be certain dimensions of God. Let me tell you this. Let us be careful while appreciating what God has done and not in an attempt to remove the ancient landmarks. Let's keep our heart open. The spirit is still working. He's an intelligent spirit. He knows that time is against us. There is already a redemption strategy within our economy. Be careful so that you don't allow people make you feel you have to wait 25 years before you become blessed. I agree on that formula. It has worked for many. Maybe it worked for those who were not oppressed of demons. Maybe it worked for those who started investing at age 8. But you right now with the emergency that confronts you, you follow that formula, you will die without prospering. There has to be another way. If God is God, let him show that he's El Shaddai. There are still parts of God we have not seen economically. There are still parts of God we have not seen ministerially. Nothing God does today or tomorrow will contradict scripture. But even this scripture you see, there are layers our eyes have not seen. Rise up on your feet. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me, till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, what God has prepared for me. So I submit to His work in me Till the Christ be formed in me One more time No eye has seen, no ear has heard What God has prepared for me So I submit to His work in me Till Christ You have given me a destiny, a purpose to fulfill. So with all I am, every breath in me, I'll spend my life to see Jesus revealed. And Jesus glory. Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified whilst you're standing or sitting whatever position I just want you to take a minute and ask the Lord to use you that this message tonight will not stand against you when God is saying, you heard this, and yet I did not find an aligned vessel in you. You heard this, and yet you did not bring me glory through your life. Hearing what you are hearing tonight is like giving you five talent. Hearing what you heard tonight is like giving you two talent. Hearing what you heard tonight is like giving you one. Make sure you do not make the mistake of the man with one. Don't go and bury it. You bury seeds not talent you trade talents you transact with them until they yield 
you war with them until they bring profit I'm available let that circumcision of the Holy Spirit by the Holy Spirit happen within your inner man and unlock virgin channels allowing the life and the power the wisdom the grace of God to flow through you in you and from you to the nations thereby bringing glory to Jesus in Jesus name we pray I want to invite you to run to Jesus for as many who are saying apostle do not end tonight without giving me an opportunity to make it right you have heard me speak one of the ways we respond to spiritual things is we do not rebel to the call of God when the Holy Spirit places that nudging upon your spirit it is because you are part of that glorious army I want to invite someone tonight who is saying apostle thank you for bringing this word but give me a chance to make Jesus Lord of my life around the balcony all the overflows or somewhere seated in this place tonight i want to count one to five requesting that you make your way to make it right with jesus or to rededicate your life i know that some of you want to come you've been convicted by the spirit to come as i count one to five unashamedly leave your seat take your bags your bible whatever you came to church with i want you to make your way to the front celebrate someone who is bold enough to come to jesus celebrate someone who is ready to be part of god's glorious army to be that battle axe god bless you my brothers for someone who is still coming my brother my sister make your way quickly come come apostle i want to rededicate my life to jesus can i come most welcome make your way to the front let's keep clapping until they come let's sow that seed of encouragement god bless you God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. Two. I count five and then I begin the prayer. Three. Four. I desire to come, but I'm ashamed. I'm afraid. No, you don't have to. This is a family of faith. Come. Come. Jesus is able to give you a new beginning. Perhaps there is a man of God in you crying to push you to the front. There's a woman of God, an intercessor, a captain of industry. God seeks to find expression through you. Make your way to the front. God bless you. And Jesus glory, you have given me a destiny. A purpose to fulfill So with all I am Every breath in me I will spend my life to see I'll spend my days to see I'll spend my moments to see Jesus revealed And Jesus glory I want to thank you very much let me speak to those who are following online don't be quick to shut down it was for this reason the Holy Spirit caused you to connect tonight even if you are a regular person who connects week in week out I want you to give the Holy Spirit room to invade your life and to make you a sign and a wonder you want to make Jesus Lord of your life wherever you are you're following online whatever nation of the earth it is never too late to make it right with jesus as i lead this my dear brothers and sisters in this honest confession i want you to also make that confession and as you make that confession there will be a provision our media people will project um, a barcode for you to scan and they would have your details and will follow up with you make sure that you do that after the prayer don't be distracted those of you in front here as well as the many who are following online please lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender nothing to be ashamed of you are before the love of your soul say this after me loud and clear as you can say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart I believe that you are the son of God I believe 
that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I'm a child of God. I go from glory to glory, grace to grace. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, I want to thank you for honoring us every week with this many who come to you declaring your lordship over their lives. Now these have come tonight and based on the integrity of your word, you said anyone who comes to you, you will in no wise cast away. They have come. They have made declarations of faith based on your word. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that they are bona fide recipients of the life of God from tonight and the power to live a victorious life is hereby imputed upon you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I decree and declare that you begin to walk and live a victorious Christian life from tonight. Everything that came with yesterday, everything came with your, came with your former self, I declare you are free from it right now. You stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free and you enjoy that liberty all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Congratulations to you. Let me request please that you move to my right, all of you. Uh, let me request that you have a word with our counselors. They are glad to pray with you. Just have a word with you and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. This is the best you can do. Let's honor them as they go. Hallelujah. Please let me have your attention. We have two more miracle services for this year. One will be next week. Next week will be our miracle service for the month of November, of October. And then the last Sunday for November will be our last miracle service. Not the last service to encounter the miracles of God, but the last miracle service. The reason is because we have a last service in this ministry and then we allow the workers and everyone to go and rest and spend time with their family. And we believe in personal retreats so that people can have the time, prepare, and then, you know, prepare themselves for 2025. If you will be there, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. You won't die. Amen. You won't die, oh. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. So please, everyone here, you have a mandate to do the work of an evangelist. I want you to invite everyone who is troubled, ailing, crying for a touch from God. Make sure you invite them intentionally. If it means to help them pay their transport, you mean to pray for them, to counsel them. If it means to show them testimonies that encourage them, by all means in righteousness, make sure you do not come alone. Let someone come with you so that you become an extension. While you are trusting God to build you, he can start using you as you are. Samuel was a baby when he had the call of God. Are we together now? Nobody is prepared enough to be used by God. We learn on the job. There is a level of preparation for you to start. But you can start drawing people to Jesus. The work of salvation does not necessarily need preparation. You can start while you perfect your understanding. So make sure you draw as many who should be saved and come with your heart prepared and we trust God for an extraordinary time in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Have you been blessed tonight? I decree and declare over you, let your weak beginning be a blessed one. When I speak these prophetic words, there are no rituals at all. It's not just a doxology or benediction to end the service. It is from my heart speaking to your week. I declare again for a believer, let this week be a week of favor. Let this week be a week of grace. Let it be a week where you experience the power of the Holy Spirit. Your intimacy with the Holy Spirit will grow this week. You will be more enlightened this week. The reality of your dominion will be made manifest this week. I call forth help as to your life. Every project you are involved with, I declare that you prosper. I say it again, prosper. I say it again, prosper. No weapon fashioned against you will prosper. 
and every tongue that rises up against you will fall in judgment joy and laughter will be your heritage this week in the name of Jesus you are protected from evil protected from sorrow protected from sadness the joy of the Lord is your strength you will be a believer with a difference I place grace upon your life return with testimonies your families are blessed the works of your hands blessed your spiritual life blessed I speak over your finances let the long-awaited testimony manifest this week I say it again let the long-awaited testimony of favor lifting jobs let it manifest this week in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray that whatever made you cry the week past in Jesus name it has no power over you this week enjoy the grace of God for in Jesus name we pray let's share the grace in fellowship the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit let it rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever amen hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching